Здравствуйте! Привет! Here we are with chapter number six, differentiation, and we are moving on to look at fractional and negative indices. So in the first lesson when we were differentiating, we just had some basic examples that we had to differentiate. What we're going to look at now is what would happen if the index, if the power, was either a fraction or a negative. So when you differentiate, there are two things that you have to look out for. Before differentiating, we have to make sure that, first of all, we do not have an x term on the bottom of a fraction. If we do, we can use the rules of indices to move it from the bottom to the top. Also, we have to make sure that if we have any square root signs, like square roots, cube roots, fourth roots, we change them to fractional indices. Think flower power. So, a lot of the time, what you'll have is you'll have an index that might be a fraction. And when you differentiate, you have to subtract 1 from the power. So, to subtract 1 from a fraction, here is a quick way of doing it. All you want to do is if you've got your fraction, you would just do the top, take away, bottom. So, look at the numerator, denominator, do numerator, take away, denominator. Here are some examples just to make this very simple. So, if you have a power of three halves, three over two, if you want to take away one, you just do three, take away two, which leaves you with one, and the power you're working with is halves, so it becomes one over two. That's it. If you have six over five, take away one, you do six. Take away 5, which gives you 1, and the, the fraction that we have is fifths, so it'll stay as 1 fifth. If you have 4 sevenths, take away 1, you do 4 take away 7, which gives you negative 3, and we're working with sevenths, so it'll stay as sevenths. I'm sure you get the idea. Just check with this one, the negative is at the top, you can also put it at the side and you can put it at the bottom as well. So there are three ways that you could write that. If, however, you have negative four fifths, take away one though, you have to treat it as negative four. So you're doing negative four, take away five, which gives you negative nine and you're working with fifths. Next one, negative seven over three, take away one, do a negative seven, take away three, which gives you negative 10 and you're working with thirds. Again, you could always write it by putting the negative at the side, so it's negative 10 thirds. With a negative a half, take away one, treat that as negative one, take away two, you get negative three, and you've got halves, and that's how you do it. So that should assist you for subtracting one if you have to do that if your power is a fraction. Let's look at some examples then that you would use that for. So example number one, differentiate f of x equals x to the power of two thirds. So doing this one, uh, is x on the bottom of a fraction? No, it's not. Are there square roots? No, there's not. So you can differentiate. So differentiating f of x gives you f dash x. What do you do from the lesson number one? You multiply by the power and decrease the power by one. So the power is two over three, so we'd bring that to the front and it becomes two over three times the one x, so it's two over three x to the power of, and if you subtract one from the power, well, we'll do two take away three is negative one, so it'll be negative one third. And that's how you're doing. Example number two. Differentiate f of x equals 1 over x cubed. Valley, could you differentiate that straight away? You're right, you could not, because you've got x on the bottom of a fraction, so you have to rewrite that. So, we're keeping f of x and we're rewriting it. Don't write f dash x because we're not differentiating straight away. So the first thing to do is to move the x cubed up to the top line, so you would end up with x to the power of negative 3. After that, you can then differentiate because you don't have x in the bottom of a fraction and you don't have any square root signs. So now we've got f dash x equals, multiply by the power, so we've got negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. That'll be x to the power of, and take 1 off will give you negative 4. That is the answer you would have. Again, sometimes you might be asked for positive indices. If you are, then you can move the x to the negative 4 to the bottom of a fraction, and you'd have negative 3 over x to the power of 4. Example number 3. f of x equals 2x plus 3 over x to the power of 5. For this one, can you differentiate it? 
You're right. Well done. You cannot because x is on the bottom of a fraction. So keep it just now as f of x and you want to rewrite this part where you've got an x term in the bottom of a fraction. So 2x will just stay as it is. We're not differentiating yet. But x to the power of 5 move it up to the top line. So it'll become 3x to the power of negative 5. Woo! After that, you do not have x in the bottom of a fraction. You do not have any square root signs, so then you can differentiate. And if you differentiate, f of x would go to f dash x. If you differentiate 2x, it would just stay as 2. Multiply by the power, so 3 times negative 5 gives you negative 15. And take 1 off the power will give you x to the power of negative 6. Again, you might be asked to write with a positive index, so keep the 15 as it is. But move x to the negative 6 to the bottom and make it x to the power of positive 6. And that is what you would end up with. Example number 4. Given f of x equals x to the power of 3 over 2, find first of all f dash x and secondly f dash 9. So first of all, f dash x means differentiate. So let's differentiate this. Can you differentiate straight away, Leah? Yes, you can. Well done, because we don't have x in the bottom of a fraction and we don't have any square root signs. So we can differentiate and get f dash x. Multiply by the power. So it's 1x to the power of 3 over 2. So 1 times 3 over 2 is 3 over 2. That'll be x to the power of. And if you do 3 over 2, take away 1. Do 3, take away 2, gives you 1. And it's halves you're working with. So it'll be 1 over 2. That is us found f dash x we have differentiated. Now we want to work out f dash 9. Think back to functions. Really, instead of f dash x, we've got f dash 9. So we're swapping x for 9. So with this example here, take your f dash x, which is 3 over 2x to the power of 1 half, and swap the x for 9. So f dash 9, swap an x with 9. So over here, swap the x with 9. Remember, when you sub in, you're best at putting brackets around that. From here, you want to work that out. Do not just go to your calculator. These are dead easy to work out because you know the power of a half. What does that mean, Lily? Square root. Well done. So that'll be the square root of 9. So it's 3 over 2 times the square root of 9. And you know, the square root of 9 is 3. So it's 3 halves times 3. After that, you can always treat 3, if you like, as 3 over 1. So you're then you're multiplying your fractions. 3 times 3 will give you 9, and that'll be over 2 times 1 is 2. So it just gives you 9 over 2. Let's try one more example. Example number 5. Differentiate f of x equals 1 over the fourth root of x to the power of 5. So again, you cannot have x in the bottom of a fraction. Lex is on the bottom of a fraction, and you have to change your square root signs to fractional indices. And here we have a square root sign. So the first thing to do, before we move it up to the top line, we have to think what would that be as a fractional index. Again, think back to your flower power. The root is 4, so on the bottom of the fraction you've got 4, and the power, range the flower, is 5. So that would be 1 over, and then rewrite that as x to the power of, remember, 4 is the root, 5 is the power so it'll be 5 over 4. We haven't differentiated yet, so we're keeping it as f of x. Again, we're not going to differentiate. We're just moving that up to the top line because we cannot have x in the bottom of our fraction. Move it up to the top. It gives us x to the power of negative 5 over 4. And then from there, we can differentiate. So it's 1x to the power of negative 5 over 4. Multiply by the power. 1 times negative 5 over 4 is negative 5 over 4. It's x to the power of, and if you subtract 1 from your power, you'd have negative 5, take away 4 is negative 9 over 4. And that is what you would do. Again, you could take it a stage further and rewrite it with positive indices, if you like. Give some of those questions a shot. It's what you do when you have fractional and negative indices. Let me know how you get on. Good luck with that.